Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor that I have decided that I will rejoice. I will not allow anything to sadden my heart. Hallelujah. Say, I am joining the club of happy people. Say, you'll never see me sad. It might be difficult, it might be tough, it might be confusing, but I refuse to be sad. I, re I refuse to let sorrow, you know, fill my heart. I refuse. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. We all come to church to revive our joy. Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And in the presence of the Lord, there is what? There is fullness of joy. Amen. May you not go back home sorrowful in the name of Jesus. May you experience joy in abundance. I said, may you experience joy in abundance. May nothing break your spirit. Amen. May May your joy surpass any form of disappointment in the name of Jesus. May your joy surpass any form of sorrow that the enemy can bring your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's like there are other people who are just sorrowful. As, as I'm declaring it, they're looking at me with sorrow. I'm like, no, pastor, leave me alone with my sorrow. Amen. I, I love to be sorrowful. May you snap out of your sorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take it one, take it two, take it three, take it four, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take joy, take joy, take joy, take joy, take joy. Take joy, take joy, take joy, take joy, take joy. Take joy, take joy. May you find yourself laughing when there's nothing funny around you. May you find yourself happy when there's nothing to be happy about. May you find yourself smiling when there's nothing to smile about. May you find yourself dancing when there is nothing to dance for and to dance about. May you be happy where you go. Hallelujah. When they are trying to make you sad, may you be happy. When they are trying to make you sorrowful, may you be happy. When they are gossiping about you, may you be happy. May you confuse the enemy with your happiness and with your joy. Hey, may you smile. Hallelujah. May you smile. May you smile even though you are not working. May you smile. Even though you don't have money in your bank account, may you smile. May you, may, even though your friends will reject you, may you smile. Hallelujah. May you prophesy with your joy. May you prophesy with your smile. May you prophesy with a song in your heart. May you prophesy to your situation that I'm not going to adjust to you, but you are going to adjust to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Because your sorrow is trying to get your attention. Your poverty is trying to get your attention. Your disappointment is trying to get your attention. Refuse to give it attention. May you tell your sorrow that you will, you will, you will, you will actually get my attention. You will change and be happy as I am. Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. As we are laboring on this theme, rejoice. Our focus this morning will be on the subject, a season of an ending harvest. Say, I'm in that season. Tell your neighbor and say, Nida, Nida, Ilankona, Ilankona, Pilada, that's my new address. 
That's my new address. You'll never find me in a place of lack anymore. Ngila pagu harvest. Ngila pagu harvest. Ngila pagu harvest. And co stranded. Slobosam. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Psalm 126. Amahubo 126. When the Lord, from verse 1, brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Kumtanda zwa mige uguti unkulu unkulu akikabeze. Nesmanga liso. Esu zo wenza ubona ngatu ya pupa. Kwa ngatu unkulu unkulu angagwenza. Akbambe akikabeze nesmanga liso nje. May God bypass your faith. May God bypass your unbelief and make you feel as if you are in a dream. Somebody is about to wake you up. May you discover that as from now, that is your reality. That is your reality. May, may you just rise up, pinch yourself over and over again and realize, I'm an ang poopy. I'm rejoicing. Ang poopy. I'm prosperous. Ang poopy. I'm blessed. Ang poopy. I'm working. I'm ang poopy. I'm in business. Ang poopy. This is my reality. Verse 2. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. May God give you a new song. I said, may God give you a new song. May God change your tune. May you find yourself laughing when there's nothing to laugh about, when there's nothing funny or interesting around you, but may God begin a work in your heart that will cause you to find yourself having a good time in your room. Oh, my goodness. And just say, oh, 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 oh. I sense that there's something great that is about to hit me. Hey. It's confused. Satan, I'm going to say, I'm going to confuse you. I'm going to say, amen. And then they said, among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. This time, you are going to keep quiet and people will testify on your behalf. The blessing is going to be so visible, it will be impossible to ignore it. Even your haters and your enemies who used to criticize you, Bazok vuma slobo sam, bazok vuma slobo sam, bazok vuma slobo sam, bazok vumela na nawe batai, ubusisegi lewe na. Ay, ay, am I talking to the right people this morning? I'm saying your haters will come back and declare your haters will call one another and say, surely the Lord has done great things for you. You will laugh, you will laugh, you will, you will laugh, you will sing, even though you don't know how to hit a note, but you will sing. Baby, the kind of blessing that is going to come upon your life is going to make it impossible for you. Ugutu Bimbe, there is a new song that is going to arise from your spirit and from your soul. Verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. We are glad that the Lord has done great things for us. Verse 4, bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. That is how your restoration is going to come. Like the streams in the south. That everything that was stolen from your life, everything that you have lost, Everything that you have forfeited, it is going to be restored in greater quality, quantity, and kind. The Bible says when the thief is caught stealing, he is going to restore not just once or twice, but the Bible says sevenfold. Say, I am waiting for my sevenfold return in the name of Jesus. 
It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. My joy is coming back. My peace is coming back. My anointing is coming back. My blessing is coming back. My favor is coming back in greater quality, quantity, and it's coming back. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Tell your neighbor and say, the Lord was watching. When you were crying, he was watching. When you were weeping, he was watching. When you gave your last cent, he was watching. When you gave all that you had, he was watching. He was watching. And you're about to smile. You're about to rejoice. You're about to celebrate. You're about to sing. You're about to be promoted. You're about to be elevated. You're about to break forth. You're about to break through. You're about to experience something that you have never experienced before. Say to your neighbor, Ziachiga izinto ksugela namhlanje. talking to people who believe. Father, speak to us this morning. We are listening. Our hearts are opened. Our spirits, oh God, are yielded to you. Our minds are focused on you. Tell us what you want us to know. Give us revelation that is going to elevate us, Lord. May we not remain the same today in the name of Jesus. When we were saved, when we were born again, God called us to his kingdom. He called us to become part of his church. Not so much so that we can just hang around and see Moshe's Kati and wait for the Lord to come back, but he called us to bear fruit. He did not call us to barrenness. He did not call us to stagnancy. But he called us to a place of fruitfulness. When we heard the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and we believed it, a seed of God's word was sown into our spirit. The spirit of God worked in our hearts, cultivated the ground and the soil of our hearts so that it can become a fertile ground for the seed of his word to be sown and so that it can yield a harvest for us. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse 23, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. You see, the seed of God's word in my heart and in your heart, the Bible says it lives and abides not temporarily, but it lives and abides forever. Lembeu e parat guami, nembeu e parat guaco. Aye ye gubuna, aye ye gufa, aye gupuma enkizwenzet. But it abides in our hearts for one purpose and one purpose alone, so that it may yield according to its potential. Because the Bible says the word of God is alive. The word of God is powerful. So anything and everything that you and I will ever need in this life, it is locked in the word of God which lives and abides in us forever. God is not going to draw from any other source somewhere. But God is going to draw from his word that already lives and abides on the inside of us. What the enemy thought we did not know or we are not going to discover 
It is the fact that we are walking around with the seed of greatness on the inside of us. That the things that we are praying for, they are not coming from afar, but they are going to be activated from within us through the word of God that is locked from within us. The Lord, therefore, is expecting you and I to bear fruit. He is expecting you and I to produce results. The Lord will settle for nothing less than fruitfulness in our lives, especially fruitfulness in abundance. Why? Because he trusts his word that is on the inside of us. So when God demands fruitfulness and productivity from our lives, he is not so much so looking at our strength and, and, and our potential. But God is counting on his word that is on the inside of us so that when we allow it to be nourished, when we allow it to flourish, it is going to yield results that are amazing in our lives. The Bible says in John 15 from verse number 1, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear, that does not bear fruit, take note, he takes away. Why? Because God does not want us to be barren or unfruitful. So whenever we don't bear fruit, God is not pleased. And he says, and every branch that bears fruit, why? What does he do? He prunes it. Why does he prune it? That it may bear more fruit. So not only does God want you to be fruitful, but God wants you to be more fruitful. He does not want you to seize in your fruitfulness or in your productivity. Once he activates that season in your life, he does not want it to stop. He has not planned for it to stop. Are we here? And in verse number 8 it says, By this my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So it is from a place of bearing fruit to bearing more fruit and to bearing much fruit. And Jesus says, it is when we are bearing much fruit that the Father is glorified. You see, God wants to be glorified in and through our lives. That is why God is going to be after us. He's going to chase us until we are going to bear much fruit. Until nobody will ignore us. Why? Because God loves attention. He loves attention. He knows that when you are bearing much fruit, he is going to be glorified in heaven. People are going to ask, what's going on in your life? When Zangani and all glory will go back to the Lord, who has sown the seed of greatness on the inside of us. Are we together, Bazalwan? So possess that mindset and attitude to know that on the inside of you, there is the seed of the word of God. And this seed is meant to cause you to bear fruit. There must be results in our lives. There must be change and transformation in our lives. There must be elevation and promotion in our lives. Why? Because we have the seed of greatness on the inside of us. Tell your neighbor and say, I am called to fruitfulness. Say, I have a seed of greatness on the inside of me. And I am going to bear much fruit. And the Father will be glorified. Every seed that is sown is meant to produce a harvest. And a season of a harvest is a season of rejoicing. It's impossible to reap a harvest and not rejoice in your harvest. So when God wants to bring us into a season 
of rejoicing, he causes us to experience a season of reaping. He activates a harvest. Why? Because God wants us to, to rejoice. He wants to see us rejoicing. But when the enemy wants to steal your joy, he will tamper with your harvest. He will abort your dreams. He will abort your goals and your aspirations. Whatever vision you have, the enemy will interfere with it. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So when the enemy wants you to be sick in your heart, in your soul, he is going to cause your hopes to be deferred. He is going to abort your hopes. He is going to kill and destroy your dreams. He is going to throw anything and everything your way so that you can give up on your dream and so that you can remain sorrowful in your life. So that you can sit down and be miserable. So that you can sit down and be distressed and depressed and confused and live in that place of darkness. But then the Bible says, but when desire comes, it is a tree of life. And that is our portion as the children of God. And I see you living from the tree of life. I see you feeding from the tree of life. And how is it going to happen? God is going to bless you. God is going to anoint you. God is going to grant you the grace so that your desires may be fulfilled. There is no dream of yours that is supposed to be aborted. There is no vision of yours that is supposed to remain unfulfilled. You are a child of God. You are called to fruitfulness. You are called to greatness. You are called to become a person who is going to change the status quo in your community. And in verse number 19, it continues to say, A desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. And I pray today that your desires may be accomplished. I don't know what it is that you desire in your life. I don't know what you have been praying for. I don't know what you have been believing God for. But I am praying that they may be accomplished in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. May those desires concerning your children be accomplished. May those desires concerning your finances be accomplished. May those desires concerning your marriage be accomplished. May your desires concerning your business and your career be accomplished in the name of Jesus. Why? So that you can have sweetness to your soul. Because the, the enemy wants to steal that sweetness in your soul. He wants to leave you with bitterness. He wants to leave you with sorrow. That's why he wants to, he, he's working tirelessly to disturb your harvest does not want to see you experiencing a season of harvest. But I declare today, you are going to experience that season. You are going to reap a good harvest in this season and beyond. Hallelujah. Because when you sow seeds, you are supposed to reap a harvest. When you sow seeds, you are supposed to reap a harvest. The Bible says in Genesis 8 and verse 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest. I love it because it talks about seed time and harvest. This shows us that God did not intend for a season of harvest to end. Notice how it says seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. For as long as the earth remains, you are supposed to sow seeds and you are supposed to reap a harvest. Whether the devil likes it or not, I am declaring upon your life that from all of the seeds that you have sown, you are going to reap a good harvest, baby. Whether or not the devil is trying to choke your harvest, but I am declaring that today the Lord will rebuke him and there is great harvest that is coming your way. Devil, we are here to proclaim, we are here to announce that not anymore will you choke our harvest, not anymore will you steal our harvest, not 
the more will you interfere with our harvest, we are going to reap and we are going to reap good. You cannot be sowing and not reap. You cannot be planting seeds and not reap. Listen to what the Bible tells, tells us in the book of Colossians chapter number 6 and verse 7. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. I am talking to somebody this morning who has sown some seeds in his life. You have sown some good seeds somewhere on some good ground and, and you have not experienced the harvest yet and the, even the enemy has made you to forget that there was a harvest that is due to you. You were not aware that there are some things that are owed to you. But I am here to announce and to declare, baby, you are about to be back paid. We are about to check the records. We are about to go beyond last year, beyond 2015. We are about to go back to day one, even the seeds that my parents sown and they did not rip them. Devil, I'm coming after that harvest that is due to me. Because it is possible to sow and not reap. The enemy always hangs around when you have sown some good seeds. And what he wants to do is to check whether or not you are aware of a harvest that is due to you. And it is possible that you can sow some good seeds and not be aware. That's why even last week I said, when you give, know that this is a spiritual thing to do. You are not donating to the church. You are not helping God. You are helping yourself. And you have sown a seed. And that seed is connected to a harvest. And you are not supposed to ignore the fact that there is a harvest that you are supposed to receive. When you have sown a seed for yourself, there is a harvest that must come. Every rent, every rent that you put into this basket is connected to, to some harvest. Because God will not, be, will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. That's why the Bible says don't be deceived. And we need to wake up to that reality. So that's why then when we even give our tithes, the Bible says the Lord rebukes the devourer. Because the enemy has got tendencies of walking around and look at the people who are sleeping during harvest time. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a son who sleeps during the time of harvest causes shame. And there are many of us, we are walking around praying to God, not aware that there is a harvest around us. We are crying out to God and we don't know that there is already a harvest that is due to us. And today, we are here to bring about an awareness that we are supposed to wake up because this is harvest time. We are not going to allow you to sleep, but we are going to awaken something on the inside of you so that you can wake up and come after your harvest. Wake up and chase your harvest. Wake up and reap your harvest. Wake up and reap your money. Reap your car. Reap your home. Reap your blessing. Reap your favor. Reap your anointing. Reap everything that has got your name on it because it belongs to you. We are not asking anymore. We are taking because it's already here. Sometimes we are crying and God is wondering in heaven. What are you crying for? What are you praying for? The harvest is already around you. The harvest has already been released. Judges chapter number 6 from verse 3. So it was. Whenever Israel had sown. The Bible says Midianites would come up. Also Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. What a strategic time. It says whenever Israel had sown, and this is what the enemy has been doing to many of us, that right after you have sown a good seed, because the enemy can smell a good seed from a distance. Whenever you sow a good seed, he is shaking wherever he is, and he hopes that it will not register in your head that that was some good seed that you have sown. 
And look at what they were doing. In verse 4 it says, Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza. And leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts. Both they and their camels were without number. And they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. You are not going to be impoverished anymore. We are here to rebuke the hand of the enemy over your harvest, over your breakthrough, over your job, over your business. Many of us, your, 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 your jobs are already due. By now you are supposed to be working. But the enemy has been sitting on your breakthrough, sitting on your job, sitting on your harvest. But we are here to rebuke him in the name of the Lord. Today he is leaving your harvest and you are entering into a season of an unending harvest. It's going to be a harvest that will not stop. It's a reality that you are going to live in. You are not going to taste it and it will stop. But you are going to experience it. It's going to be your world that you are going to live in. If you are intentional, you better believe that God, I am sick and tired of being impoverished when there is harvest. That is true to my, I've been sowing seeds. I have been crying. I have been weeping. I have been calling upon your name. And it's about time that your season will change, baby. It's about time that there's something good and something greater and something favorable is going to come your way. For a change, you are the one who is supposed to smile. For a change, you are the one who is supposed to celebrate. For a change, you are the one who is supposed to tell a testimony. For a, for a change, you are the one who is supposed to call a party, call a gig, call somebody and say, come and let's celebrate together. Because this is my time. I refuse to be stuck in one season of sorrow and pain and disappointment. And, and I, I refuse to be stuck in that season where I am confused whether I am going or I am coming. But I am declaring today I am breaking loose and I am breaking out. I'm going to taste a season of favor, a season of increase, a season of fruitfulness. And it's not going to go. It's going to be harvest upon harvest. Harvest upon harvest. Harvest upon harvest. I declare harvest upon harvest. I declare upon your life harvest upon harvest. When the other one ends, another one begins. When the other one goes away, another one comes. I am declaring that kind of a season where you are not going to experience dryness in your life, baby. I am declaring a season where you are no longer going to be in between jobs. It's got to cease because it's not your portion. Shout, I am fruitful. Shout, I am fruitful. I want to close. There are different types of seeds that you can sow in your life. I'm saying these kind of seeds so that you can know even the types of harvests that you can expect in your life. Number one, you can sow the seed of the word of God. You can sow it in your life, in your heart, or you can sow it in other people as well. As you read the word of God, you are sowing it into your heart. As you share the word of God, you are sowing in other people's lives. Number two, you can sow seeds of righteousness. Hosea 10 and verse number 12, the Bible says, sow for yourselves righteousness. So you can sow righteousness. Whenever you decide to do the right thing, you are sowing a seed of righteousness. Whenever you consider to do something so that you can be in right standing with God, it's a seed that you are sowing and you are not supposed to forget it. You are not making a right decision just so that you can make, you know, God happy and then that's it. But it is a seed that you are, each time you choose to do a right thing, it's a seed that you are sowing. Number three, you can sow spiritual seeds in your life. Galatians chapter number six verse eight says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So every spiritual act is a seed that you are sowing. Whenever you wake up to pray, it's a seed that you are sowing. Whenever you lift up your hands to worship God, it's a seed that you are sowing. 
Whenever you decide to take some time to fast, it's a spiritual seed that you are sowing. Whenever you, 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 you decide that, you know what, I, I, I am going to dedicate more of my time to the things of God. It's a seed that you are sowing. And you're supposed to expect a harvest. Number four, when you walk in the spirit or you obey the promptings of the spirit of God, that's a seed that you are sowing. And God registers all of those moments where you obeyed him. Galatians 5 verse 16 tells us very clearly, it says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You can, number five, sow for yourselves good works. Galatians 6 verse 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows that he will reap. Verse 9, and let us, not go, let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. So if you show somebody kindness, if you do good to somebody, you give somebody a pair of shoes, you give somebody clothes, you give somebody a car, you hug a person, you decide to encourage somebody, it's a good seed of good works. If you are helping somebody, that's a good seed that you are sowing for yourself and you need to expect a harvest. Are we together, Bazalwan? Number six, of course, you can sow for yourself seeds of finances. Second Corinthians 9 verse 6, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Verse 9, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Verse 10, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Are we together? So whenever you are giving finances in the kingdom of God, you are sowing a good seed for yourself. It's a financial seed. And you are going to reap accordingly. But here are the types of harvests that you can expect in your life according to the seeds that you have sown. Because remember, the Bible says, God will not be mocked and don't be deceived, right? Whatsoever kind of a seed you sow, that, from that seed, you are going to reap a harvest. So number one, when you sow the seed of the word of God, in your life, in your heart, you are going to reap holiness. <laughs> you are going to reap holiness. Psalm 119 verse 11. Listen to what David said. Your word I have hidden in my heart. That I might not sin against you. I am speaking to somebody in this house. That sin used to come and destroy your life. That even when you wanted to stop, you could not get yourself to stop. But I am here to declare a season of the harvest of holiness in your life. Because the word of God in your heart is supposed to come alive and begin to carry you through during the times of temptation. I declare that you are going to be a holy child of God. You are going to be a holy daughter. Your holiness is going to come natural. Because of the harvest from the seed of the word of God. In your life, you're going to hear and receive the word of God in a different way in this season, baby. The devil has been destroying your life, has been aborting your destiny just by causing you to live in sin. But we are here to declare that that season is about to end. The seed of God's word in your heart is about to erupt and yield holiness in your life. Oh God, I have hidden your word in my heart that I will not sin against you. May holiness be your portion. May you be able to walk and be holy before the Lord. Because of the word of God that is going to open up your eyes. Because of the word of God that is going to penetrate your soul and begin to separate the flesh from the spirit. Because of the word of God that is going to be alive and cause you to see things differently. Oh, the devil was, was destroying your life for the past 5, 10 years. But this year you're about to walk differently, baby. You're about to make different decisions. You're about to be transformed and be pure and be holy. 
And you are going to be a stranger to your friends. You are going to be a stranger to your family. They, they know you with your sin. And some of them have been calling you names according to your sin. But I'm telling you, God is about to give you a new name in line with the nature of his character. Shout, I am holy. Shout, I am reaping holiness. Sin will not have rule over me. Whenever we sow the seed of God's words in others, number one, we are going to reap laborers. We are going to reap people who are willing to work in the harvest field. And I want to declare it in Builders Church that there are many laborers that are going to rise up even in this season. We are going to see people who are going to rise up from this church and they will be willing to preach the gospel. Why? Because the seed of God's word is beginning to convict them. To tell them that your neighbor needs Jesus. Your friend needs Jesus. Your colleague needs Jesus. Every person connected to you who is not saved. I am declaring that we are how to see a harvest of laborers who are going to get into a harvest field. It's not going to be difficult to win souls for us anymore. But we are going to have that conviction from the word of God on the inside of us. We are going to say like Jeremiah, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. I can't reserve it to myself. This message of the gospel of Jesus, I can't keep it to myself. I can't help it, but tell, tell my neighbor about it. I can't help it, but tell my friend about it. I'm about to share Jesus. Even to stones. I'm about to walk in my school and share Jesus. I'm about to walk into my workplace and tell people about how the Lord saves. How the Lord delivers. How the Lord heals. There is a, there is a harvest of laborers rising up in this house. I, I prophesy there is, a, there is a harvest of laborers rising up in this house. I, I prophesy that in every corner we will invite, in every corner we will preach, in every corner we will lead people to Christ. In Pictures are going to be on Facebook of somebody leading, to, leading somebody to Christ in a corner. See me, let's lead the taxi and somebody will be sharing Christ. Pictures will say, Why? It's, it's harvest time, baby. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. I see an army of laborers rising up in every place. We are not going to wait for a crusade to preach. But every day will be a mission field. Every day will be a preaching opportunity. Every, every moment we get, we'll be sharing Christ just in, in a very natural way. In a, your, your cousin will visit you and go back home saved. Your friend will visit you and go back home saved. I said your colleague will walk into your office and walk out saved because of the power of the harvest that is coming forth. You will become a laborer in this season. I said you will become a laborer in the harvest field in this season in the name of Jesus. You are not going to be intimidated anymore. You are not going to be a afraid to preach anymore. You are not going to be quiet anymore. You are not going to say, oh, I'm shy. But boldness will come. You will rise up. And of course, when we sow the seed of God's word in other people's lives, of course we reap a harvest of souls. Of course people are going to be born again. Of course, people are going to hear us preach to them and they are going to respond in a, in a positive way. It's not going to be hard anymore for us to get people to, to, to surrender their lives to Christ. It will be an easy job. Why? Because the word of God, a spirit-filled word of God is at work this time. I said the harvest is ripe. There is a harvest that is due to this house and it's coming from all directions. That is going to be difficult for us to keep track and keep... I said a harvest is coming. I said a harvest is about to hit this house. A harvest is about to arise in this house and we are going to see people getting saved in greater numbers. Not anymore will just come in smaller numbers, but it's going to be great in greater numbers. We are going to see a great number, a great amount of harvest. Souls are coming. Hey, I said souls are coming. I said souls are coming. 
I said it's about time we reap from the harvest of those seeds that we preached in different places and nobody responded to the altar call. We, we, we preached Christ and nobody lifted up. This, the harvest is about to come. Even those we did not invite, they will come. Even those we did not preach to, they will come. Even those we did not share Christ to them, they will, they will surrender their lives. They will call the office and say, I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. They will send the email and say, I've just read a prayer in your Facebook page and I've surrendered my life. Shout, it's harvest time. Shout, it's harvest time. I don't know about you, but I'm here to prophesy this morning. I'm here to speak your harvest into existence. I'm here to activate a season of an unending harvest in your life. Number two, if you sow righteousness, you will reap the fruits of righteousness. People will testify that you are a righteous man because of the fruits they see in your life. Number three, you will reap when you sow your spiritual seeds, you will reap the knowledge of the Lord. You will know Jesus better this year. Let me tell you, you will know Jesus better this year. You will know him like you know yourself. You will know him like you know your friend. You will know him like you know your mother. Jesus is about to reveal himself in a special way. Why? Because those seeds of praying, those seeds of seeking the face of God, those seeds of the moments of worship, those seeds of fasting, where you didn't even know that I've fasted and nothing happened after that, your eyes are about to be opened and you will see Jesus differently. He is going to become so real like your hand as you touch it. It's going to become very very real in your life. You will get intimate with the Lord Jesus. Say, I will know Jesus. Number four, when you sow yourself or you sow your obedience or walking in the spirit, you will reap the fruit of the spirit. Not anymore will it be difficult to love people. Not anymore will it be difficult to experience joy, to experience peace. Your patience is coming back by the Spirit of God. You will be kind all of a sudden to one's people. You will be just a good person all of a sudden. People will look at you and see something different. You will be faithful. Not anymore will you be disloyal and be full of deceit in your heart. Because the Spirit of God will begin a work in you. That as you obey him in other things, he is going to help you in your areas of weaknesses. You will love your spouse better. You will love your friends better. You will connect with people. You know many of us, we've been messing relationships, breaking relationships, but that is, season is about to end. You will begin to appreciate people. You will begin to connect with people in a different way. There are a lot of people that we have lost because of our unfaithfulness. Connections that God brought our way that were supposed to bring us breakthroughs. But because of the state of our hearts, the conditions of our heart, we could not even sense it when the, when the Spirit of God was prompting us about what they are bringing. But I'm saying, as we have sown good seeds of obeying in other areas, God is about to give you a harvest of the fruit of the Spirit of God on the inside of you. And number five, are we here? I'm closing. I'm left with six minutes. You are going to experience a harvest of fruitful labor. When you sow good works, when you do good to other people, God will bless the works of your hands. Not anymore will you labor on a hard and a difficult ground and not yield results. But there is a kind of blessing that is going to cause you to be fruitful in every good work. That is what the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter number 1 and verse 10. You are going to be fruitful in every good work. Not anymore will you start a project and it will, it will not be completed. But you are going to be fruitful in your labors. Everything that you work on. It is going to yield results in the name of Jesus. Are we here or are we going home? And lastly, you are going to reap for yourself true riches. 
You have sown with your finances. Sown with your money. And the enemy made you to forget your good seeds. But today I'm here to declare over your life that God will cause you to taste true riches. You thought your salary was it. But God has sent me to tell you today that you're about to experience Imali Yamambela. You are about to experience I prosperity Yamambela. You are about to experience I success Yamambela. You, you, you thought you were blessed, but you are about to experience the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow in a true sense of the word. All along you've been living on what your salary can afford, but God is about to change your season and introduce you to a different kind of a season where you are going to experience a season of an ending harvest. Are you here, Bazalon? An ending harvest where you, you not anymore will we experience a season like Mali Pelacon with a number of days that are still remaining in a month, but your money will carry you over the month and over the month and you will be re you will remain with the month money from the previous harvest and the previous week and the previous month and year after year not anymore you will complain like others and say but you are going to be in January and leave like it's December you are going to be in January and go to holidays even when you are coming from a holiday in December you will enter into a season of being able to give even when others say but you will be able to have seed to give but I am here to announce true riches are coming your way True favor is coming your way. True prosperity is coming your way. The blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Listen, the Bible declares that God opens up the windows of heaven and he pours out a blessing that there will be no room to contain it. What is coming your way, your bank account will not be able to contain it. What is coming your way, your wallet will not be able to contain To contain, I'm prophesying a season where there will be money in your cabby hole, money in your ashtray, money in your pocket, money in your bank account. You will withdraw and not look at the balance. You will spend money and not check the balance. I am declaring upon your life, let every seed you have sown Yield that kind of a harvest for you. Let every seed you have sown, every type of a seed, yield every type of a harvest that has got your name on it. That is a season I'm declaring upon your life. May you not lose any harvest. Even the one that the enemy stole and you did not know about it. I am declaring. The Bible says when the thief is caught stealing today we are signing a warrant of arrest against the enemy. What, what, whatsoever he has stolen, whatsoever he has taken, whether or not we were aware. Whether or not we, we knew about it. Whether or not we realized the contracts that were supposed to be signed and you did not know, you thought you did not qualify but the enemy stole from you. The job you were supposed to get and you were declined not because you, were, you didn't qualify but the enemy was stealing. Today we are declaring the Lord is bringing back our captivity. It will be like a dream. Our restoration will be like a dream. If we thought we are blessed, ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you, we are about to experience something that looks like a dream and sounds like a dream. That when the announcement is being shared with you, let me declare that you, the phone calls are coming, bringing glad tidings, good news that are going to turn your life, turn your situation around forever. Emails are coming through that are going to bring glad tidings that even when you read it, you will think it's fake. You will think it's spam. You will think it's somebody just fooling around with you. But it's going to be your real world that even when you are still responding to that email, another Another one must come. Another one will hit you because it's a season of harvest upon harvest. An ending harvest. 
No, not anymore will I taste prosperity for a season and go back to poverty. Not anymore will I taste a breakthrough and just go back to being stuck again. I am declaring it's a, it's a season of an ending. Harvest. Harvest upon harvest. Everything that has been stolen. Everything that has been taken away. Everything that you have forfeited. May the seeds on the ground respond to the word of the Lord. Listen, the Bible says, the Bible says, there is hope for a tree. Even though it can be cut down. But it says at the scent of the waters, life begins to come back to the tree. We are not teaching a sermon today. We are speaking the word of the Lord over our seeds. And we are declaring at the scent of the word of the Lord, my seed will spring up. My seed will come back to life. My seed will rise up. My seed will yield a harvest for me. Holiness is coming my way. Souls are coming our way. Laborers are coming our way. Good works are coming our way. True riches are coming our way. Every good and perfect gift. Come on, lift up your hands and begin to thank God for your harvest. Open up your mouth. Thank God for your harvest. Thank God for your harvest. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this season of an ending harvest, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we embrace it. We embrace it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare. We are walking into this season, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shanto, resikapa, halaba, soka, paramandori, zegrita, zobrato, sesitedea, rapado, zikretosia. Come on, just take it for yourself. Claim it for yourself. Take it by force. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Rako sekete, repeko teluka, zapato, likatose, shento, labaka, zegretesia, repeko tezukate. I step into my harvest field. I enter into my harvest field. I walk into my harvest field. I reap into my harvest harvest field. It's my reality right now. It's my life right now. Hola basoka, hela baseka, hola basoka, hentolo bose brake, pando zika pa, sapala bakate, zepreko talo kazu, rempeto rika dosi, zepero kato zika, zakala basa prate, zepero kato re, zipala manto, repeko tezu, shapata zekete, epeto rika to, zapato lekete, zepeto tika to. Atala bakaze, epeto likato, ishazo zezuka, zampantala ba, repeko tikato, replegro peruka, ebrato zizeze, my harvest, my harvest, my harvest, my harvest, my harvest, my harvest, in the name of Jesus, I receive it, my anointing, my blessing, my favor, my breakthrough, my job, my anointing, my open door, my opportunity, in the name of Jesus. Shako paso, e patose, e patesa, e patosa, e patasa, e patose, se peto, e peto. bazoka, I shall be fruitful, I shall flourish, I am productive. Ela masoka te, I increase, I multiply. In favor, in blessing, in anointing, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and declare, I thank you, Lord, for my harvest. It's an unending harvest. And I declare that it's permanent. It's my reality. It's my world. I live in a realm of harvest upon harvest, upon harvest, upon harvest. I will never lack any seed anymore, but I will keep on sowing that I will reap continually. 
in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord that you rebuke the devourer for my sake the enemy will not destroy my harvest he will not steal my harvest in the name of Jesus I declare he restores now he restores now he restores now he restores now in the name of Jesus let me say this let me declare this over every business that has ever sown into this house you have given from your business, you have tithed from your business. I speak a breakthrough over your business now in the name of Jesus. Every contract that is due to you, right now I declare it signed in the name of Jesus. I declare that God will open up more doors for you, more opportunities for you. May God set you up for favor in the name of Jesus. May you experience a different season in your business this year and beyond in the name of Jesus. May you never experience a season of dryness anymore. May you never experience a season of being stuck and stranded anymore. May every contract that was aborted by the enemy be reinstated now with a better offer in the name of Jesus. Come and put your hands together and bless the Lord in this place oh Jesus oh Jesus our hearts are filled with laughter our hearts our mouths are filled with laughter we will rejoice we will rejoice we will celebrate we will celebrate in the name of Jesus we sing for joy we shout for joy, we praise for joy, we dance for joy.